Hey there everyone, it's Anthony back with another video here on Single and Placing. Hello, hello. Um, and today, if you can't tell by what we have sitting in front of us, we're about to do a kidding up. So actually I need a tray to kind of finish this off, this little setup. So as you can see, we have um, the kit that I am currently kidding up. And this is that custom from Paint with Diamonds that I ordered. Um, of the horse head nebula galaxy painting that my um, friend requested. I already did a full unboxing and justification of this, but this is a custom painting um, utilizing an image that he sent me. So I'm pretty sure that this is not a, a um, copyright free um, image. I'm not quite sure. I tried doing some some research of it, but wasn't able to find much, but I'm pretty sure he just pulled off, off of maybe like a blog or I don't know. So um, I'm not trying to like be super showy with it. I already did a whole video on this, so I'm not gonna rehash that, but I am gonna work on it because it is something that I purchased. Lesson learned, but I'm not gonna throw it away. It was a pricey and I do wanna still give it to him as a gift, but going forward, only licensed artwork on this channel. So, um, uh, but I wanted to do a kidding up just to kind of see what the quality of these drills are from uh, Paint With Diamonds. I don't believe I did a kidding up of the other custom I had. It was my own personal image that I ordered from Paint with Diamonds. Um, I ended up bailing on that. Once again, take a look at, um, if I can find the link to the video where I mentioned that. Essentially, it was supposed to be a gift, but it is no longer going to be a gift. So, um, so now we're here with this kit, and I wanted to start working on it. From what I remember, and I'll have to take a look at, at it, I remember there was a... Um, quite a bit of like it not confetti with a ton of color changes uh, of this canvas more of confetti of like a two to three different colors um and quite a bit of color blocking and i need a little bit of that in my life um i'm doing the red gate of hongo and snow which does have a lot of white so there's a lot of color blocking in white but the areas that are not white are pretty confetti and then i just came off of soul of the rose um John William Waterhouse from Distracted by Diamonds. That was pretty confetti heavy. And then my goal or what I was thinking I was going to do for the summer with the Masters event is do a third old Masters kit. And that's going to be or that was going to be Zodiac uh, by or from Alphonse Mucha, another Distracted by Diamonds. And that one is incredibly confetti heavy, too. So I just need a little bit of, of a break. I want to mix it up a little bit. And I really do want to start working on this canvas. It's a 100 by 120 so it's a massive canvas it's going to take me ages and ages to get it done this is a super long-term project so i figured let me start working on it because i think it'll be a bit a bit of a break from the old masters so do that do a, a session of diamond painting with the old masters kit the red gate of hongo come back to this here and there and just swap them out uh, swap and change them and um yeah it'll just kind of mix it up for me i think so, and I had only been working on one kit. Um, that was the Soul of the Rose. I worked on that kit pretty much exclusively once I dropped that other custom that I was doing. And then I moved into Red Gate of Hongo and Snow and I've only been working that by itself for a few days. And I was like, this, there's a reason why I had two kits going previously because I want, I like to change it up and not sit in front of that same exact canvas day in and day out. So. That's why we're here. We've got this massive heavy bag of drills. Like I said, this is um, 100 by 120, huge canvas. I've got my tray here. This is the um, Nix's Notions shrimp boat, if you can see that. Um, I use this to catch all maybe the loosey gooseys that are in here, and then I'll show you what I do with them. Um, this is, I think, my second or third kidding up video that I've done on the channel. So you might know the process. I've got my funnel here in case I need it. Oops, I forgot to grab another very important couple of things. Um, I've got a dryer sheet here in case we run into any static um, in those bags. I also have my scissors to cut that dryer sheet. And then I've got my containers here. You can see that I didn't necessarily clean them off perfectly <laughs> from the last kit, but I don't mind. They only stay like this until another gets, sticker gets put on top. And then we have our stickers. I've tried a couple of different stickers, the ones that the containers came with, um, some other ones that I purchased, and but these have been my favorite so far. I'm not necessarily in love with the neon because that can be a little bit jarring or confusing if you're using different color stickers for the same DMC, 
but I put the DMC code and the code that the canvas has given them or the, yeah, that they've given the, given the uh, image. Um, I put that on here and then um, that's what I used to, um, what, where was I going with that? Oh, I put that on there. So I always just reference the number. I'm not looking at these yellow, pink, green. That means nothing to me. But I like this brand, the Up and Up from Target, and these particular ones because they are like kind of an easy release. So they just come right off. They don't leave this residue or anything behind. So this is my go-to. I might try to find the same brand in white in hopes that it's the same adhesive that they use on the back of these stickers. But very happy with that. The other thing I forgot to do is um, this Paint With Diamonds Custom did not come with a legend. So what I'm gonna have to do is grab my tablet. Sorry for walking away. Um, I'm gonna have to grab my tablet. Oh, I forgot what a process this is. I am so sorry. Okay, so I have to grab my tablet. I'm over here on the other side of the canvas over here. Hi, hi. And I'm gonna lift up the canvas so I can snap a photo of the legend that they put on the canvas itself. And then I have to use that picture for reference, not only when I'm kidding up, but also when I'm actually painting. So that's a big pain. Um, and that's definitely a pain point for, um, or a knock against this, uh, these customs from Paint With Diamonds, is they don't send you, and maybe this is true, this because these are the only customs I've ever purchased. Maybe that's true for all customs, but it does get on my nerves that I really don't have an easy, like, walking legend or anything like that. So let's get real close up in there. Snap. So you can see. There is the photo, and that's the legend that I work off of for the whole kit. So I'm going to also do it the opposite way, because oftentimes I've got my um, tablet kind of set up in landscape mode. So bear with me. I'm sorry you're not seeing any action on, on the screen, but this is just to help me when I do start working on this. Snap. So you can see, here's the other one, oopsie. So that's the one that I'll use um, when I'm actually working and I have to like zoom in and out. And so I guess that's one thing that is a pretty big pain is you don't get the nice legend. I guess I could because this isn't surged or scalloped edges. So there's a potential for it fraying anyway. I could cut that out and <laughs> just cut it right off and just use it, and who knows, I might get frustrated six months down the road and say, let's cut this. So um, let me go ahead and pull that up, put the canvas back down where it goes. Okay, so we're gonna pull up that legend. Okay, awesome. And then I'm just gonna stand this up back here off screen. Maybe you can see that, you might be able to see the bottom of it, but I'm gonna use that and Okay, I think we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so I hope everyone's having an excellent week so far. Not too sure exactly when this will be going up. I'm trying to record a decent amount of content in advance um, in preparation uh, for some trips that I'm taking. And it's just that time of the summer where my weekends are going to be filled with camping and not diamond painting, so I'm trying to fit as much as I can in during the weeks, even though my weekdays have also been really busy. It's just, I'm kind of just fitting it in where I can. Um, so bear with me during the summer months. Um, I'm just a pretty outdoorsy person. I live here in Colorado, kind of right on the foothills um, near Golden. And the, the reason I live here and live west, even though it's more a little bit more pricey to do so, um, you know, west of downtown, uh, closer to the mountains, is because I've, I've lived in the plains pretty much my whole life until I moved to Denver probably about 10 years ago. Um, so, my, you know, my childhood, all the way through my 20s, I lived in, like, the eastern towns like Greeley and Platteville and Brighton. Um, even lived in Brighton, you know, a few years ago, I guess. So, um, so I moved further west because I just developed a love for the outdoors and hiking and stuff in my adult life. We really didn't do much of that while I was younger. Um, and then I met, you know, my, my recent set of friends or the friends that I've had for the past decade or so. 
and they're all very outdoorsy and love to go camping and hiking and um, biking and all that stuff. And so I had to quickly, um, it was either, you know, you don't, you miss out on some of those fun times, which I still do. I'm not like incredibly active or anything like that. Or you pick up some new hobbies and hiking was one that I did fall in love with. So, um, and camping. So I do a lot of that and all of that's to say that Diamond painting might take a little bit of a backseat, but I'm trying to record a lot of stuff in advance. Even if you don't see a ton of content from me in the next, you know, couple of months, um, at least I'll, I'll try to have, you know, a video or two up a week just to, like, keep the conversation going. And, of course, when I get back into town um, or I'm home for, happen to be home for a week, I'll, of course, be checking messages and still continuing to engage. Um, but it might be less... Uh, it might be less like actual like posts and videos and that type of thing. But the easiest videos to do are unboxings. I'd say kidding up is probably one of the hardest just because it's kind of time intensive. Um, so we might actually do some speeding through and I don't even know if I'm gonna get all of this done tonight um, or in one session because uh, some buddies wanna go watch the Avalanche game. They're in the sports finals. I don't do sports, but they're in the finals and I think this is like, I don't know, it's an important time for that team. So they want to go watch the game. And I was like, as long as there's wings or something for me to munch on and let's stare at my phone, <laughs> then I'm good. So I might be called away at some point soon to go do that. And then either I'll come and finish this up tonight. Um, if it's too late, I might do it as a voiceover so I can work in silence and then put the voiceover when I'm not keeping people up by my talking <laughs> or um, I'll just crank through it. But um, so yeah, I, that's just kind of a, a PSA that you may see fewer videos um, or a, a weird cadence, you know, I'm just throwing, throwing them up when I can. So um, I remember when I did the unboxing of this, I confirmed that I had all the colors here and looking in the, uh, the bag here that I had them stored in, I don't have any loosey gooseys, which is awesome. So um, we may see some that are kind of like you can see here how these are stuck um, in, in, in between. We just have to be careful with that. And I am noticing a number of little stragglers of different colors in these bags. Um, not a ton, but like here's another one here. There's like a little mauve kind of stuck in there. So something make note of, oh, you can see some here, some green here. Um, but yeah, it looks like uh, these were little, they've got some mixies in them, which is fine. Um, so here we have our first one. This is one, uh, the number one DMC code is 155. And then they've, they've uh, done this by number of drills, 6,531 drills there. So um, I've got my sticker sheets here. You might, that might be slightly off camera. I'm so sorry if it is, but we're, we're already deep into it. So typically what I'll do is grab a couple of containers um, and usually I don't have this all spread out, but that's just what happened today. <laughs> um, so I'll have a couple of containers. I'll have my funnel here and then I'll take my bag and let's see what kind of static we are working with. Da -da. Okay, great. Da -da. Da -da -da. Actually, that looks pretty good. Let's see. There's a fly in here. Um, I... There was a, a couple of lives. I don't know when it was, but when I first started diamond painting or, you know, a few months into diamond painting, I started binging whipping chats from like all sorts of different creators. And I just love the kind of like little things that happen that aren't like planned or people have to kind of talk around or like just like it's almost kind of like the blooper reels of like whipping chats. And um, Katie Diamonds and Washi. She had a few videos, maybe it was last summer. I honestly, I don't remember. I, I just had, I just basically will pick a, um, a content creator. So be it Miss Coffee or Tiny Worlds of Wonder or Punks and Crafts, there's a whole bunch of them. I'll usually just go, whoopsie, I'll just go to their playlists. And when I'm doing like a diamond painting session, I'll just go to the end, like the earliest ones, or I'll just scroll randomly and just click and just let them play on. Like just roll one right into it, another. And I'm not even like looking at what date it was or anything like that. I just let them go. And there was a couple on there on Diamonds and Washi where there was like a cricket in her kitchen, I think. And I feel like I kept calling it the interrupting cricket because like she would, it wouldn't, it wouldn't cricket. It wouldn't make its noise for a second. 
And then as soon as she would like start talking again, it would start again. And I can only imagine her like, cause I think she said it was like maybe behind her dishwasher and something. So I was just like imagining her like, like kicking her leg or like pushing the stuff around like off camera, trying to get that thing to like shut up. But you could tell she was frustrated by it. And it was just like, that's like, I love that stuff because it makes it so much more real. Like, it's just like, that's how you like start developing those connections with like your content creators is when stuff like that happens. Like if everything is super polished and like there's like not, not a single flaw, no misspoken words, no, no putting your foot in your mouth or no crick, uh, cricket, <laughs> you know, interrupting cricket in the background. Like it, I, for me, I think it takes me out of it a little bit. And I like listening to like when things kind of get tripped up, you know, like I get really frustrated in the moment when Apollo is giving me a hard time. Um, but I know that a lot of people are just find that kind of endearing. And I find that really endearing in um, the videos that I watch. So I hope everyone doesn't mind when like things look a little bit messy and they aren't quite as polished as they could be. That's just how, you know, I kind of am like I was driving home today and I was like, I need to get a little bit more content put um, in um, in savings, essentially. That way, when things do start getting really busy in the summer and I'm, I don't have time to do this, I've already got some stuff in the bank and I can, um, I can just schedule it for upload. And that'll just take a lot of, um, not necessarily stress, you know, this is something that I'm choosing to do and I want to do, but it just, I don't, I can go and camp and not be like, ooh, you, try to get out of here a little bit early so you can get home and film or anything like that. So, um, so all I'm doing is putting the code number here and the DMC. I guess I really don't need, I had the, um, I had the legend up, but since the bags are labeled and they have the DMC code, we're putting the iPad away. I don't need that. I almost don't re don't know why I grabbed that, but I'm glad I did take that picture because now I have it ready to go. So I've got the number and which order it goes in and then the DMC and we have five containers here. So 155 and 1155, perfect. So like I said, I pay no attention to what number they fall or you know the color code. I'm not doing all yellows or anything like that. They just go, I go off of the number really more than anything else. And after about like the, second or third section that I've done where I've got a really good mix or a, a relatively good mix of the colors, maybe more sections than that. Um, I kind of start to like my mind already kind of knows like, okay, your twos or your three tens or whatever are on this row. And so my brain starts to already kind of like click all of that into place. So no real need to worry about that. And we've got two here um, or one there. So one is done. Two is 159, just this little baby. Um, well, I'm gonna do a few more, and then the rest I'll probably just do in silence, and then I'll I'll maybe wave my hand or I'll stop and pause the video and start again if I have something really important to say. Um, but there was no static in that bag, and I don't remember there being any static with the other paint with diamonds kit I've done. And I'll say this, I said it in. I think I did a whip and chat. No, I have never done a whip and chat with the paint with diamonds. I think I've just mentioned it that I, where is that freaking bee or fly? Oh no, it's not the fly. My, the container was sliding down. I was like, what is that fly doing? Um, two, one, 59. Um, the, the paint with diamonds canvas, the last one that I did, and I did about 10 sections. So if you can see here, this is a section, so I did like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, eh, maybe even more than that, maybe 15. Um, this area that I did do, the drills fit together snugly, which at first I was like, this is beautiful. They're all just snapping into place and kind of moving and grooving around so they're all lined up. And so I love the uniformity. I didn't have any gapping. It was just like, wow, this looks like a really complete picture even up close. And then the next day I'd come back and I had some popping drills and they weren't, I've heard people say popping like, oh, it popped me and bopped me right in the forehead or hit my glasses or flew off onto the floor. It was not anything like that. You could just feel them raised. And if I were to kind of press and rub my hand, I'm sure some of them would come up with like a swipe. So I just did a nice roll before each session. They'd stay down for 
it, it would take at, at least a day, maybe two days for those to like start to come up again. But it was a concern. And my initial goal or my initial plan before I decided to bail on that canvas completely was to seal it as I did like an entire row or two rows. Just give it a quick seal, move on to the next section. Um, and then I also got some of the diamond dots, the dot stick. That way, if I accidentally got some sealant on the the canvas or the adhesive, then I could go back through with the paintbrush and do another layer of this, a very thin layer to get that stickiness back. So I was kind of already mentally preparing for that to be the case. But like I said, I ended up not working on that canvas anymore. I'll come back to it eventually if it's just not a high priority because I'm not giving it away as a gift anymore. Um, but I am giving this away as a gift. So um, we're looking for three. Oh, here we go. So this is three DMC 208, um, 8,560. Oh my God. So there's 48 colors here, but as you can see, the vast majority of them are small-ish bags and then some massive bags. So I'm thinking there's going to be quite a bit of color blocking and those areas of confetti are going to be fairly few and far between. I have a feeling we're going to be alternating between a lot of these like five or six colors and that'll be kind of that color blocking confetti or confetti just with like two trays. So like high volume confetti, I don't know what you'd call it, but um, I'm curious to see how this works up because it's a galaxy painting. Um, I'm not going to insert the image. I'm not going to insert the image. Will, will I? I don't know. Um, I'm not going to insert the image today, but if that is something you want to see for future whip and chat, no, I just don't want to get myself in trouble is all. Um, no, we're not going to do it. We're, if I do whip and chats with this, which I may or may not, um, it, we're, we're probably not going to do a, um, we're probably not gonna do like a, here's what the original artwork is. You'll probably just see the section that I'm working on and then I'll show you the reveal at the end of the finished kit, but I'm not gonna go grab that image um, from my phone because I, I, I am 99% sure that he just Googled Horsehead Nebula and, and I tried and I could not find this exact image. There's lots that look similar, and, but this one, the way that the coloring has been done, I don't know where he, where he got it from so but I'm gonna keep I'm gonna play it safe I don't want to get any sort of like oh this person you like rip my image and put it all over their videos so I'm just gonna be cool um so yeah um but I'll be working on this on various whipping chats and uh, anyway the reason I brought I said that is because it's a galaxy image so you think that they would have uh, rendered it with a lot of black and I'm pretty sure there's black in that original photo but there is zero 310. I'm not looking at a single 310 drill here. They've used some really deep purples and they've used like this really deep blue. They've used this kind of navy blue as and I'm assuming that's a big piece of the background, but everything else is kind of these lighter purples and lighter blues and kind of medium blues. So I'm really curious to see how these, what I would consider li a lighter color palette for a galaxy um, artwork is going to work up. So I don't know if the rendering was just off or the color saturation was just off or if this is going to end up looking really good, but I'm proceeding with caution and that's what I did with the last kit. I wasn't exactly like, oh, this is going to be the gold standard because by the time I ordered, so I ordered these two customs and then I got a regular kit for free, which I still have yet to do an un unboxing and I don't know if I will because... They claim that it's licensed artwork, but you know what? I'm going to try to do some research and see if I can find that elsewhere. Um, ooh, um, side note, and I'm so sorry to sidetrack. Be careful when you buy these storage containers that you see here. Some of them are going to, they hold the same amount of drills, but some are going to be a little bit shorter and uh, more squat. And these are going to be slightly taller and slightly more thin. And they use different caps. You can see how one's a little bit more wider or flared. I, when I de, de, or I kitted down that custom that I ended up putting a pause on and put it all back in its bags, I just was ripping off tops and throwing them aside and then they were all mixed up and it was a pain to match the right top to the right container. It took a good hour <laughs> to do that um, because I had just haphazardly thrown them around. So be careful if you have these kits 
because um because kit to kit i bought these all from the same amazon seller i have this one here i've got three more over here bought them all from the same amazon seller and it's a mixed bag some of them will have the wider ones some will have the taller ones it really just depends um but they hold the same drills so i don't think they have to advertise like oh this is the style so just be careful you might end up with a bunch of mismatched ones and the wider ones they don't sit right on the skinnier containers they kind of pop off so um, i really didn't notice that because i wasn't cranking them on there and then when i went to go work on um one of my more recent diamond paintings on soul of the rose I kept grabbing for some containers and sometimes the lid would just come right off. So that was a pain. So just be, be mindful of that. Um, but yeah, the rendering of this, I'm curious to see. And with these drills, and I think I was talking about the drills originally. So there's a little bit of weird, some little plasticky trash. And I think that's because these are, I think these are acrylic drills. I mean, they, I'm pretty sure they are. I still don't totally know what the big difference is in quality, but from what I've heard just from other people is that acrylic is of lesser quality than resin. Correct me if I'm wrong. So I'm assuming these are acrylic. <laughs> so we have one, two, three, four, five, six of the threes, and that's color two, zero, eight, three, two, zero, eight, three, two, zero, eight. I'm sure you love listening to me say that over and over again. Two zero eight. Whoopsie. Two zero eight. Um, three three. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm really gonna mess that up. Zero. Oh my gosh. Hopefully that doesn't screw me up. Unless there's like a color thirty three and it's two eighty eight. I think I'll be okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, the drill qual. Um. So anyway, I don't know how we got to. Um. Oh, because we're talking about blacks and the rendering and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I wanted to say that the drill quality, aside from the, those popping, which could be just a matter of the size of their drills versus how much space they've given them on the canvas, because this seems pretty tight. Like, you don't have a lot of wiggle room on those, those grid lines. Um, so it could be that. But the actual drill quality itself didn't seem half half bad. I've seen I've absolutely seen much shinier drills, um, but th a lot of these are like the thirteen facets and like a mix of nine and thirteen. I think is what it is. Um, but I don't. I mean, it look they look similar to like the distracted by diamonds ones. I will say that they're not even close to diamond dots. Diamond dots look like they were slicked up with oil. Um, and we're just like shiny as all get out. And even today I, I went to the office and I looked at that, Im that image of the kit because it's hanging up at my office. And I was like, this thing is just so glossy shiny. So I really like those drills, but these are a little bit more muted. They remind me of the Distracted by Diamonds or even the Diamond Painted Deutschland ones. Um, they're not, they're not close as far as quality and consistency of size that I've seen working on them to like Diamond Art Club or anything like that. They're kind of somewhere in between. So um, that was three. Let's go for four, which is 209. Let's make, let's do two more bags. Let's do four and five, and then I'm going to speed you up. But I kind of wanted to do a little kitten chat with you before I just was quiet and put this at like 20 times the speed. Um, so let's see here. 30. I'm trying to like figure out how many drills um, each of these will truly hold. And I don't do them all the way to the tippy top. But then I can look at it and be like, okay, 10,000 drills, I'm going to need six containers. Um, or, you know, do the math there so I'm not grabbing as I go. But, I mean, it's not that big of an inconvenience just to grab what's sitting right next to me. Um, so I try not to go all the way to the tippy top because I found that um, if I do that, then let's say I get to a section and I just need one of these drills and it's our even five and it's all the way to the top, I have to be like, eh, and then I have to put them back, like the extras back in, let's say I dumped out 12, got to get those five or six drills up on that very top and they almost always just flip, can keep flipping out and it's just like, oh, frustrating. So I've learned to like fill them 90% full, give myself a little breathing room. And then um, sometimes I'll go back through and marry up my like half empty containers to get rid of a container. But more often than not recently, I haven't been doing that until there's just a little bit left in a container. Cause like I said, topping them off can be kind of a pain. So like here, 
my instinct would be to do this and I'll do it until it's like about that full, but I'm not trying to like pack them in there. And this is, oh, make sure I've got the right one for the right one. And this is color four and it's uh, DMC 209. Four, 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 two, zero, nine, two, zero, nine, two, zero, nine. Perfect. There's that. Right. And there we go. Okay. That's our first set of stickers that we cranked through. And so our last one's gonna be five while we chat. And of course it's a little, I was hoping it might be a bigger one so you'd have more time, but this is number five and it's color 304, just a little bit of red. But yeah, there's so many of these little baggies of just like the tiniest amount. And it's like, how did you, how did that computer in its rendering decide like just a touch of red here? And that, that either speaks really well, I, I think it speaks more positively to paint with diamonds than negatively because they're not just like washing it all out and saying, oh, let's give him, you know, 10 colors because that's really all we can see here. Um, I think their max is 48 because my last kit, that the other kit that I ordered from them was 48 as well. And that one had a lot more detail and color variation. So I think they just kind of do the best with what they've got. Let's do another one. I don't mind chatting with you. I hope you guys don't mind either. Um, this is six and this is 309. It's like more of a, it's a little bit more of a muted red. It's not as bright or as vivid. It's kind of got a little bit of a, like a peachy kind of hue to it, very slightly. And there's 337 of those. So yeah, 337 versus 14,099, 18,000. And there's this little, little 300. That last one was 276. And that's uh, color number 6309. I'm loving the no static. 6309. If this thing keeps falling down, I tell you what. Okay, there's that. And also, I'm trying to get the most out of this time because my roommate has Apollo right now and he's bringing him home later and then we're supposed to go from that to go out to the Pip's place and they have outdoor seating so I can bring the puppy. And um, so I'm like just like living it up because he he would have been already like let's go let's go play it's hot in here the ac's off what are we doing um number seven code 316 420 of those drills so i am kind of like taking advantage of my not having my fatherly duties right now but i'll probably have to end this once they walk through the door um, but that's seven three sixteen so as you can see, we just write the code DMC, and then up here, they're just going in order along this um, container um, storage system. So now we've got color eight. Let's get rid of that. Um, eight, where are you eight? I think that it might be this giant. Is it this? Oh, this is nine. This had to, I think these are the, now this is something you really wanna be sure of. Okay, let's look. Okay. So I think that this, because this is, I, I was getting confused because I'm like, this bag is maxed out, so it must that must be the color. But this says 19,632, whereas this says 26,585. There's no way that they'd be able to get 26,000 into that bag if this is 19. So my I'm able to deduce that this must be the extra and they just didn't pack it full because they knew they had to have a second bag. And these two shades look much closer to these two. If you saw my, um, if, I'm, I'm totally out of frame. If you saw my um, unboxing, I was trying to figure that out. Like this bag doesn't have a sticker on it and I'm pretty sure it goes over here. So, um, okay, number eight is this guy, this kind of purple here. This is 327. But 8,342 of those drills. Oh my goodness. I'm going to be living the purple life. This is a Barney Affied Canvas. <laughs> um, okay, it looks like there's a little bit of trash in there from the last kit. I'll just dump that out. And then once again, I'm trying to make sure that I don't mess up 
my container sizes. So it looks like I've only got one wide bod. So let's do this and this. Um, but yeah, my roommate's been taking Apollo um, several days out of the week um, into the office with him. It depends on what he's got going on that day. If he's out in the field at the construction sites, then he'll, he can't do that. Um, because I don't want him leaving Apollo in the car and obviously he doesn't want that either. So um, he stays here in the kennel on those days when I'm at the office and Jeff is out in the field. And then, um, that one's a little too cool. And then the days that he can take him, he takes him into the office or sometimes he'll go run to a couple of sites in the morning and then come get Apollo from lunch and then just do the afternoon with him. So it's been such like, I, I can't even describe the amount of appreciation I have towards him for doing that because it's not his dog and he refuses for me to compensate him aside from me like making dinner once in a while, that type of thing. And it's such a stress reliever for me knowing that he's just not cooped up in his kennel and he goes out for potty breaks and my other buddy, Alex, um, he it also works, he, they work for the same, I mean, they own the company together. And so they lease that office space and Alex has a nine-year-old husky named Maverick that used to, that I used to call my baby until I got my own baby. So Apollo gets to go play with Maverick and like, they get to go out and do little walks together. And they, um, it's kind of an open office. Like they, they have doors they can close but there's this like common area. It's almost like a co-working space kind of thing, but they're like individual offices, but dogs are allowed. So um, there's a whole bunch of different dogs in the offices too. And most people just leave their office doors open. So the dogs just kind of free roam and play. And it's just like, it's almost like take, he gets to go to kind of like a doggy daycare. I think there's like five dogs there total. So he gets to socialize and do all that stuff and he's not just sitting in the crate and it's just like, it's so amazing. I am just like so thankful that I had that um, he gets to do that. So um, this is number eight, the color's 327 and we've got six. Three, five, six. So yeah, I really appreciate Jeff doing that. Um, and then I'm hoping that with work, so right now our um, office is strictly, our team is strictly in office, um, on site, no remote or hybrid or anything like that. Um, I got approved the first week I had Apollo to do a couple work from home days, but I also had to take some vacation time to care for him and get him, like start to get him crate trained. But I think it's just been, we are really pivotal or critical time in with our company. Um, but that time has passed. Of course, we still have a lot of work to do to get done what we're trying to get done. Um, but everyone's kind of, it's kind of sigh of relief mode and like, okay, now let's prep for the next hurdle. So I'm hoping that our structure at work might adjust a little bit and there might be a little bit of flexibility where I can transition to like hybrid or something along those lines. And I'm really hoping so because I just would feel better if I had the opportunity to um, work from home with Apollo on certain days and then Jeff can take him maybe, you know, once or twice a week but to share that responsibility a little bit, because I definitely feel like I'm leaning on Jeff pretty hard. Not that Apollo can't go the entire day um, without leaving the kennel, but he gets uncomfortable towards the end, and I worry that he might be, like, struggling to hold his bladder or hold his bowels. Um, we haven't had any accidents yet, but and maybe that's just me being overprotective and he'd be fine. But, um, I mean... I'd prefer it if he didn't have to be in the kennel, you know, so. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And I'm hoping that once he hits a year, so probably like in January, which is still, I guess it's not that far off. I say it's far off, but this year's flown by. Um, he'll be past the majority of his teething phase and we can trust him to, and not that he does this right now, but you never know with boredom. Um, he, to chew on any sort of furniture or things he's not supposed to chew on. He's pretty good when left to his own devices. 
of not touching, like not gnawing on furniture, or like tearing at the couch. I don't think he's ever even tried. Um, he has his little toy bin. He knows that that's where his toys are. Now he'll grab a t like he'll grab every toy in that thing and have them all over the living room, but he's not like gnawing on the carpet or anything like that. He's just he has 10 toys out at any given time. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cap some of these. There was one time that I got a little, I don't know, a little uh, emotional with my hands when I was talking and I had that I had all these open containers lined up that I had just filled and I knocked like a couple of them over and I was like no so I try now that now that I've done that I try to like not have as much potential risk sitting out here um wow there are a ton of these drills okay so um but yeah so eventually I'm thinking my like ideally by January I will be able to trust Apollo to just hang out in the living room and just kind of be, you know, a typical dog that doesn't need to be created. I guess not typical, but be a dog that doesn't need to be created. Um, but he's Husky and Malamute, and they are not to be trusted. <laughs> or those breeds are, are notorious. Not as much Malamutes, I don't think, but Huskies are definitely notorious for um, getting bored and anxious and deciding that it's time to... Um, to play home decorator and just kind of tear things up. So we'll see. I might, I don't know what I, I kind of want to like test it by like putting him in here or putting him in a room with minimal furniture or maybe like something to test him. Like here's a couple pillows in this room or see what he does to the carpet, but I'm renting. So I don't know. It's, it's like, do I even want to risk it and trust him and try to trust him or should I just default and you, you cannot be trusted. So We'll see what happens. The one thing that he will do is he loves socks. So if you take your shoes off and leave the socks on the floor, he'll grab them and he doesn't like tear them apart. He just has them between his paws and he just kind of like has it in his mouth. I'm like, what are you doing? And then he'll try to put up a, a little bit of a fight to let it go, but then he gives it up pretty quickly. Like he's not like playing tug or, you know, fighting tooth and nail to keep it. He just kind of like sneakily just kind of grabs it and then goes and sits quietly with it like, okay, I, this is my chance, you know, to like have my, this little, this thing that I've been eyeing all night. So he'll kind of like saunter over and just kind of like grab something kind of slyly and then kind of slink off and you don't notice it till you look over and he's got like a sock or he does that in the bathroom. Um, he'll pull like a tissue or um, in our, um, oh, I've got some spare drills in here. Um, these are not for this kit, so I'm gonna put them in here for now. I don't know where those came from. Um, yeah, and then and then if I need another tray to put any Lucy's from here, I'll have to grab it. But anyway, um, so yeah, he'll do that with paper towels. Like if you throw in a paper towel away and he has access to it, or like um, if they're he did it with um some packing plastic that was hanging outside of the recycling bin he was snagged that and like I said he doesn't really like do anything with it he just like wants to have it as like a little baby you know and so I've had to scold him like no you have to play just with your own toys but it's kind of hard to create that differentiation right now so um we're doing the best you, that we can and he's not like it's not like I've walked out and like all the trash is on the ground like you know, some dogs will do that, like just kind of rip things to shreds. He just kind of like, I don't know, he's like very cute about it. He's just kind of like, oh, this looks nice. I'm just gonna, you know, he doesn't like knock things over. And even his little toy bin, he does once in a while pull the toy bin out. It's just sitting on a shelf and it's like a little storage bin that has a groove in it so dogs can get their necks in there um, and grab a toy. Uh, my boss got it for me. It's very sweet. Um, but he will sometimes, if he's extra playful, he gets too anxious and like too riled up and he'll just grab that whole thing and pull it off the shelf and like knock it over and then just start pulling all the toys out. But when he's in a more like mellow mood and he's just kind of casually like chewing or hanging out, he will go in and pull it, like get his little neck in there and take one toy out at a time and play with it a little bit or I'll play tug of war with him for a little bit with something and then he'll get bored and then go and grab one more toy and bring it out. Like he's very like, 
he's just very mild with like how he does stuff like that and of course he has some more aggressive like play times where he's really tugging and stuff but for the most part he just is like I don't know he's just kind of like he's I call it like he's he's a soft paw like he's just like a little bit more gentle and patient very patient for the most part so we'll see it it goes back and forth there's days where I say that and then there's other days where I'm like oh my god this dog is like going to be the end of me he's just like relentless and so those are the days that I've learned that I need to like stop what I'm doing stop trying to like and it mostly happens when I'm trying to film something like if I'm filming an unboxing where I'm standing he gets extra excited because like I'm not sitting in my crafting chair which usually tells him like okay it's time to hang out so if I'm like standing and like moving around and pulling plastic off and making noise and and talking and gesturing he likes to be near me um, to kind of see what's going on. So he'll be bumping into the tripod and knocking things over and jumping on me and and like grabbing a toy and like whipping it around around my legs because he's like, oh, we're, we must be playing. Like this looks like playing to me. So I've learned that when that happens, rather than trying to like get him, and I don't know, this is a training thing, but I feel like at his age, it's hard for him to understand like, okay, this is me time right now, or I'm the dominant person, so it doesn't matter, or, you know, I'm the, I'm, I'm the owner here, and so if I want to just stand here all day and essentially ignore you, then you need to be okay with that. Like, I struggle with, like, asserting that and just saying, okay, clearly this puppy wants to play and needs some you know, it needs some energy to be released and I need to, you know, make sure that he has that before I try to jump into a video. Because usually I'll start videos like right when I get home so I still have some daylight and all that stuff. So he's been cooped up in his kennel and then I come home, let him out, pee, poop, take him for a really quick walk, give him some food. I'm like, all right, let's go film. And he's like, ah, ah, ah. like I still need a good hour, two hours of your time. So I think for me, when that happens, rather than getting frustrated and like, why won't you just sit? I need to understand that he doesn't know that I'm trying to focus or film or I need like things not to be moved around and just acknowledge him, play with him, maybe even get him something that will take his attention away from like being right, you know, around my, my legs. And so I've been giving him some raw beef bones. Let me count these out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 containers of Color 9, 333, 19. Okay, let me do this real quick. One, two. Um, so yeah, four, five, six. Whoops, <laughs> so I wrote a six, nine. I said 19, right? So that's six. So I need 13 more. Nine. Sorry. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Wait. Oops, I overdid it. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I did two over. But you know what? I'm gonna have a color nineteen and a twenty-nine eventually. So we'll just do nineteen and nineteen and save those. Um, okay. So I'm gonna write three thirty-three on all these. Um, so. I have been giving him raw beef bones. I keep them in the freezer. I got them at Pet Supplies Plus and they're like, I don't know if they're tail bones or what they are, but they're just kind of like small kind of puck round bones with a ton of marrow and, and some fat and some meat on them. And um, they sell them in the frozen section at the Pet Foods, Pet Supplies Plus. I'm sure you can get them elsewhere. Um, so I picked those up and what I'll do is that's like a really high reward treat for him, a high value retreat uh, treat for him. He really, really loves them. And so I know I can get him to do pretty much anything and he'll stay calm for an extended period of time because he's like getting the marrow out and I give it to him frozen. So as it starts to thaw, more pieces will come off and stuff like that. So I can get a pretty good um, recording session or whatever I need to do um, during that time and it's really good for their teeth um, teething puppies um, you don't want to give them smoked or cooked bones I've heard because those can splinter or be too hard you want to go for the raw and I do the frozen because 
if you just put those, if I took them out from the freezer in the pet store and just put them right into my fridge and they thaw, now you've got a ticking clock of like, when is this starting, gonna start getting bacteria? Just like putting a piece of raw meat in the fridge. And then if you're taking that out and giving it to your puppy and it's getting all warmed up from their saliva and stuff and you just, so anyway, I just try to be a little bit more cautious with it because I don't want it to mess with his stomach or um, I don't want anything growing on that. So essentially I set a timer and he has an hour max with that bone before I either throw it away or it goes back in the freezer to kind of get it frozen again. Ideally, um, that freezing will, like, if there was any yuckies on it, that helps to kind of eliminate that. I know it's not a perfect science and a lot of this is just kind of speculation in my head or like, I think this would be a better way to do it. Because at first I was like, oh, I'll take it from him, I'll put it back in the fridge and take it out again. But no, I refreeze them every time. And I only do that for um, like two or three sessions. So um, he's only gotten, gotten through two or two a week, essentially, because I don't give them to him every night, just when he needs a little bit of that, like, just sit and gnaw and just something to kind of keep his attention. Um, so he gets through two a week. So I think maybe, yeah, maybe once, less than once a day. Um, yeah, maybe once every other day for like an hour. And then I I put that in the freezer and I do that two or three times and then throw it out and then do the other one like two or three times. It's kind of what I've been doing. So um, yeah, he doesn't get them every night, but he does get them a good portion of the evenings, especially if he's been like extra bitey. Um, certain days he is in the mood to just like gnaw on my hand and he prefers my hand um, and my arm as like a chew toy and we're working on it um training him not to go for the he doesn't do it with strangers he just does it with like me and um and yeah like we'll be playing and he'll like get he'll like get the toy and get the toy in his mouth but then like if it's a tug toy he'll like kind of chomp his way closer until he's back on my hand i'm like hey what are you doing like just the toy just the toy so he's he's learning and I feel so bad when I like have to scold him on that because we're playing and he's like in such a good mood and then he'll like nip my hand. I'm like, hey, no. And he looks at me like, but we were playing. I'm. What are you talking about? This is fun, right? And I'm just like, oh, you're so cute. But I have to hold strong. So anyway, we're up on our 10th color. Let's do it. We might as well go for 10 and then we, we really will be done because it is starting to get hot in here. And so I can work in silence with the AC on and then if there's anything important that I need to call out, I can either voice over it, I do a voiceover, or cut off the AC and stop the video so it kind of gives me a timestamp of like, don't forget you did something here, um, and then pick back up. And then I also need to see how much battery I've got left and if anyone's messaged me and all that good stuff. So we may just kind of do a, a pause, pause, and I can regroup here. Um, so yeah, um, if, you don't see me until the end. Um, thank you so much for watching this portion up until now. Um, I know a lot of people really take joy in, in watching kid up videos and stuff and like to see the process and uh, they find it rather soothing. And as do I, I will put kidding up videos on in the background just as much as I put up or as much as I'll watch or listen to um, whipping chats. So I really like it. I hope you do, but I also know that this volume um, can be a little taxing to try to sit through the entire thing. So we'll do the first 10 of 48 colors, and I go so much faster when I'm not talking. Um, we'll do the first 10 of 48 colors. This is color 10. It is DMC code 340 if I didn't show you. Um, 10, 10, 340. And then I don't know how long this will take me if I'm going to get all this done as I sit here right now or if I'm gonna go watch the hockey game and come back or pick this back up tomorrow. But I'll come back when we're all done. Um, slow it back down once this is all put away, show you what the containers look like, do a quick recap of anything else I saw if I did notice any more, any static, not any more because I haven't seen any, but any static, any issues with the drills that are popping up aside from our little random colors that are mixed in here and there. Here's another one here, here a couple. Um, but other than that, I'm not really seeing too much. So this might be an uneventful kit up, which is fine by me. Um, there's nothing like a 
a, a drama free uh, kit up or kit down or um, you know not seeing any like glaring issues so that's good um, no complaints thus far and um, I'm gonna keep cranking through this as long as time and um, yeah time will allow and then we'll see you at the end and that'll be that you'll probably see this kit um, in smaller pieces um, just because I want to avoid getting myself in any kind of trouble um, during whip and chats and then I'll like I said I'll show the completed image as I've done it on the diamond painting um, when we're all done but I don't think I want to insert that image that um, my buddy sent me so um, let's see we're working on 12 but anyway let me keep going here I won't keep you any longer we'll see it at the end and I'm just gonna quadruple octuple speed this so we can really crank through these last 30 or so colors thank you all so much for watching up until this point and we'll see ya bye It's Anthony. Um, I ended the last um, bit of that video a little bit abruptly or pieces of that video abruptly so I was had to stop uh, basically when I finished the first two um, of the the two 60 piece containers here which all both fit into one large piece and then I had to kind of do a continuation uh, uh, with this third one here and then I finished that and then I kind of wrapped up and then um, I didn't really feel like coming back on and doing the like outro or say kind of wrapping up 
Um, so essentially this kit ended up taking up two, uh, a total of 120 uh, pieces here, containers, and then a good, I guess this is, is this 10, four or five? Yeah, so 10, 20, 30, 40, five with my trash and my spare. So 165 containers of drills for this kit um, in total, um, you know, these two being trash and spare. So uh, yeah, it's a lot of drills. I didn't fill a lot of them all the way up. And in fact, some of them are kind of that far filled. So I probably could have condensed this even more, but I wanted to give myself enough room to play with it and consolidate as needed and not feel as stressed. One thing I did notice kitting up is a lot of these colors, like this 17 here, 722, have the teensiest amount of drills. Um, so I, I don't want to go through and pull them all out. But like, for instance, this one, 42, just a small amount. So part of me thinks that maybe that means that they did a really great job with the rendering and they were able to really narrow down those colors. Other parts of me thinks that they might have missed out on some more blending and I'm going to have harder stops and starts in colors which might make it just look like one big blob of purple um, because there's a ton of different like purples and lighter purples and stuff. So I don't know. I, you know, and I think part of my experience with my personal experience with pavement diamonds has been fine aside from the issues I was having with the popping drills, which I'm actually not feeling on this canvas yet. Um, just in this section, I don't know. It's probably off camera, but I've done a section over here. You can't quite see um, a tiny section. So I don't know. I'm I'm going with it. I'm going into it optimistically but cautiously. Um, but so far so good. The kidding up process was fine. Um, but I just didn't have it in me to like film an outro yesterday after finishing the kidding up, and I just was ready to go to bed. So and it's already pretty late tonight. I um I actually went out with a couple of, or with a friend out to um, Clear Creek Canyon, so to the river, and just kind of sat down there, and we had some wine and cheese, and like a little charcuterie board, and some cupcakes um, in celebration of my birthday this week. So um, I'm already a little bit tired from like just it's been a full day, and I sat out in the sun for a couple of hours. So I may finish um, a portion of a section on this canvas. Otherwise, I might just work on editing and uploading videos. I'm trying to get ahead of the game. So um, this is actually being recorded um, earlier in the week. I plan on posting either Friday or Saturday because I'll be out camping during that time. So it'll be scheduled. That way you still have some fun content, get to enjoy a kidding up, pretty long kidding up, I think. Um, and then uh, we'll be back to it next week with some real-time content. I'm hoping to do a whip and chat um, uh, for my Wednesday whip and chat. I'm trying to do them Wednesdays, but that's never a guarantee. I'm just, tr I'm trying to create some semblance of a schedule. Um, I also noticed, um, today when I pulled up, um, my channel that I'm sitting at 99 subscribers, which is so awesome. I, I did a skincare, um, a skincare YouTube channel for a number of years, about three or four years. And that, I believe, got her up to around 450 over that time. So the fact that I went from zero to 99, I'm hoping I hit 100 here the next couple of days um, in such a short amount of time, just in a couple of months, I've been doing videos, maybe even one, one month, one and a half months. It's kind of crazy. Um, this community is so like supportive and willing to share and it feels like it's tight knit but it's also growing at the same time i mean i'm fairly new to it so obviously it's growing but if you have any friends family members anyone that you think might take some um, useful information or take some value from this content please feel free to share the link with them um, i typically post links of the products that i was using in that particular video below but we discussed this is a paint with diamonds custom that i'm not super comfortable, you know, you know, shouting from the rooftops or promoting or anything like that. So I don't think I'll, you'll have any links here. I was using for the majority of the time as far as catching drills and stuff. And you can see them here because I ended, ended up starting to work on this canvas last night for just a little bit. Um, Nix's Notion. So I will include um, a link for Nix's Notions if I remember to. You can always find Nix's Notions link on a lot of my videos because I do use... Um, their trays or her trays quite frequently. And I did want to shout her out. Um, I am a Patreon of Nick's over on Patreon. And part of that was uh, we received 
um, her Patreons, depending on their your level, your um, subscription level, I'm the the lowest level. I just you know throw a coffee her way once in a while. Um, but you did receive, I believe this is called the Tall Boy. So it's the larger version of her shrimp boat. It's a one inch tall, and it has the Phoenix Fantasy, which is the event that she was co hosting last month. It was all Phoenix based. Um, the year 2022 on this side, and then you have Nix's Notions on this side. So really cool tray, and it's in this, what she was calling the Phoenix color. So on the larger trays, you can get more color variation, but you have this orange here, and then kind of this more um, lighter orange. This is more like a burnt orange, lighter orange on the sides and lighter orange on the top. And then it kind of has this color changing effect to like a really pretty gold. Um, so I'm not sure if you can see that effect, but it's really, really cool. And then the, t the stopper has more of kind of, it's like an in-between color. So depending on where you're at in the filament uh, reel or roll, depends on kind of what variation you'll get. But I liked that mine got the, um, the more red bottom and you can kind of see that de delineation there and then it transfers to that kind of more classic orangish gold on top. So it's supposed to kind of represent a rising phoenix, kind of have that fire gold kind of color to it. So I really, really like it. This is a limited edition. I believe she is gonna sell a couple of these to finish up the roll of filament, but once it's gone, um, I think she said she has enough for maybe two, maybe three more trays. Once it's gone, um, then, it's gone. She's only buying it and only producing it for this particular event for 2022. So kind of a nice little limited edition tray um, that I really love the color. I'll see if I like these really high walls. These are one inch uh, walls compared to the submarine. We're getting really off topic here. We were supposed to be doing a kidding up, but they're like almost kind of double the height. I'm not sure if you can see that. So I don't know. I kind of like a slightly shorter um, wall because I diamond paint like this where I you know, place and then grab and then place and then grab or multi-place and I kind of rest my hand up here on the corner so the higher the wall is the more like really dipping down and lifting up dipping down and lifting up and you can see I tend to do this a lot um, I'm not sure if you can see that but I tend to like hit the side as I'm lifting it out and then I knock all the drills off of my placer. So um, I tend to prefer a shorter, uh, like a medium wall. This is kind of the perfect wall height for me. Um, but we'll get into all that. Um, I'm gonna be doing um, probably a review because I'm also getting her Venti, which is the larger size. It's the same size as the submarine but the one inch. So I kind of wanted to do a review of the two different heights to see which one I like. And then we'll also probably can be comparing uh, these trays to another popular tray brand just to kind of see from a quality standpoint what we're looking at. So um, anyway, that's that. Let me know if you have any questions. I didn't mean to just be like, eh, but let me know if you have any questions, comments, um, need any additional information about the topics that we covered here today. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Um, like, subscribe, all of that stuff, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks again, and as always, happy placing. Bye!